We will all fail more than once every day. I know that may sound startling and not the most optimistic of, of messages, so let me be quick to add that this does not mean that you or I are failures or that the quest for perfection is futile. There is a difference between failing, even repeatedly, and being a failure, as I hope to explain. Failing is an essential part of the mortal phase of our quest for perfection. We don't often think of it that way, but that is only because we tend to focus too much on the word perfection and not enough on the word quest when we read the mission statement. Failure is an inevitable part of the quest. In our quest for perfection, how we, res how we respond when we fail will ultimately determine how well we will succeed. My plea for you today is to learn how to fail successfully. We should not be so fearful of failing that we avoid trying new or hard things merely because their very newness or difficulty increases the risk of failure. Don't let concern for your protecting your grade point average dictate the courses you take. Challenge yourself academically and in other ways. You may discover skills, talents, and joys you would otherwise miss out on. Your mortal experience will be a more productive part of your quest for perfection if you intentionally stretch yourself with new challenges even those, especially those, that involve a real risk of failure. As T.S. Eliot once observed, if you aren't in over your head, how do you know how tall you are? Maybe our most difficult challenge is to deal with the second category of failures, those that are not willful sin or intentional calculated risks, but rather the unavoidable, uncontrollable failures that occur because of the messiness of life, because of factors beyond our direct control. What do you do when, for the first time in your life, you get an A minus, or a B, or a D, or an F, even though you've worked very hard? What do you do when you try your best, but you still don't make the women's chorus? Or when the relationship you are pursuing falls apart? Or even when all these things, and even more important ones, seem to go wrong at the same time, and you feel completely alone, overwhelmed, and totally a failure? What do you do then? Let me suggest you follow the advice given in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Cast not away your confidence. Professor Martin Seligman, one of the founders of positive psychology, has observed that the most common characteristic of those who are able to overcome almost any kind of uncontrollable failure is that, is that they are optimistic. And the good news is that people can be taught to some degree to think like optimists. One way Professor Seligman suggests is by helping people view setbacks as things that are number one, temporary, number two, local, and number three, changeable. In other words, they react to failures by thinking, it's going away quickly, it's just this one situation, and I can do something about it. As Elder Jeffrey R. Holland put it, if you are lonely, please know you can find comfort. If you're discouraged, please know you can find hope. If you feel you are broken, please know that you can be mended. Because of the atonement, all failures are challengeable and temporary, except the one that occurs when we give up. So whatever you do, don't you dare give up. Yes, I am asking you to trust yourself more, but more importantly, I'm asking you to trust God. I urge you, in your moments of doubt and despair, in the times when you think you fail and you think you can't make it right, to focus more on Him and less on yourselves. Too often, we ask the wrong question when we fail. We ask, am I good enough? But the real question is, is God good enough? Is he as good as he says he is? Can he really deliver on his promise that all things will work together for our good if we will trust him and strive to do the best we can and keep going whenever we fall short? I testify that he is. God is as good, as powerful, as loving, as patient, and as consistent as he says he is. If we will but focus on the eternal truths he has made available to us, both through institutional revelation and through personal promptings and reassurances, he 
we'll turn all our failures into successes.